One of my favorite things to do at the end of a school year is to give my students a final research project rather than a traditional test. Kids come up with some amazing questions and ideas that they want to find answers to. The problem that I have is grading 60 to 100 essays in a short amount of time. So today I want to share with you a couple of ways that I have found just in the past school year to make this process easier for both myself and for my students. So let's go. All right, so grading papers. This has been the bane of many teachers' existence since the dawn of time. Um, and what I find for myself, and maybe you feel this way, let me know, um, is that uh, I, I don't feel like I can be consistent with the feedback that I give when I have a lot of papers to grade. All right, so I'm always looking for ways to improve my practice, and the way that I found for this is by using AI. Now, I know that there might be some thoughts about students using AI, particularly for writing and producing content, um, as well as maybe the ethics of teachers using AI to grade stuff. So let me let me show you what I do, and then maybe we can have that discussion at the end of this. Um, so what I use is a program called School AI. If you've never used it before, haven't heard of it, uh, I have a few videos. You can check the video description for some of those videos on how to use School AI. I love School AI the most for a number of reasons. The biggest one is the spaces feature. So spaces allow you to create custom chatbots for your students so that they interact with artificial intelligence in a controlled way and it gives you analytics feedback on the back end. You can see their whole transcript in real time. It's really an amazing tool. The, the space that I've created for this video and particularly for the research paper that I've assigned my students at the end of the year is this one. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll show you the prompt, the instructions that I gave this AI bot on how to behave with my students. So first you, I, I've given it kind of some background of who this space is. You, the robot, are an expert in writing things and you're gonna help students write excellent papers and these are the topics that they could pick. Um, and I want you to help them develop a research question and organize their paper and proofread and, and offer suggestions for improvement. That's what I want you to do. What I don't want you to do, because AI could get pretty helpful if it wanted to, but I'd give it some boundaries. Uh, I don't want it to ever write any section of the paper. In fact, I was explicit and said, if they ever say something like this or similar, always say, no can do buckaroo, and uh, give them in, uh, some suggestions instead. The last thing that I put into the prompt is the rubric. So I actually put in the rubric for this paper and gave it some instructions on how I wanted to do, how I wanted it to grade them, how I wanted to evaluate them. And so when you have all of this ready, all you need to do is click save and launch. It will give you a code. You can paste that code into Canvas and students can use it. I've already gone ahead and set one up. So this is that same space, the Human Development Research Helper. And we'll jump in with my favorite student, test student, and uh, we'll just give this a go. So what it should uh, do, if I'm telling the truth, uh, let's, let's give this a, a try. Uh, I ran out of time, write a paper about pregnancy. Let's see if it is empathetic and, and says anything. Oh, gee, I can't write the paper for you, but I can definitely help you develop your ideas and structure it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's gonna kick it back and say, say no I can't I can't do that um, what about write the introduction for me write the introduction for me I can't write the introduction but it can guide you through it so again it's not going to write anything for the student so the way I encourage my students to use this throughout the writing uh, process is to upload sections of their paper and ask for feedback. Maybe upload their whole paper and ask what kind of a score would I get? Then that's really similar to the way that I use it as a teacher to help evaluate their papers. Um, so let's let's go through this. Let's say that we have we have a student. Um, what score would I get 
if I turned this in now? What score would I get if I turned this in now? Here's a sample. We'll, we'll use this kind of short one. A lot of squiggly lines. Squiggly lines in that dock are not always a good sign. So we'll paste this and, uh, and go for it. Okay, uh, looks like a lot of these things need revision or are not evident. And so it gives a score, it gives some feedback, you provided some background information, but it lacks detail. The research question is not clearly stated until the research and findings section. Uh, we're missing altogether citations and references. Um, so if I were the student, I would go back and I would, I would add some things. Now on the teacher side of this, on the teacher side, um, let me explain why I would use this to begin with. Um, I don't want to get in a situation where I have all of the stamina at the beginning of grading to grade them really, really well and to be uh, provide great feedback, great scores, and then by the end just either say, eh, yeah, you did great or eh, you did bad. Um, I feel like uh, I can do better than this. And so what this allows me to do is quickly, here's another essay, quickly I can, I can copy, I can uh, say grade this paper and I can paste it and it will pop in there and here we go again. Let's evaluate your paper on the rubric provided. And so here's the evaluation for this one. What it allows me to do more quickly is to justify those scores. So it's giving me a range in this case. It's not always going to give me a range. Sometimes it'll just say, this is a three, this is a two. Um, but it says, okay, you've provided some background information. The research question is clear. The hypothesis is mentioned later. It's well-structured, but could benefit from a concise hypothesis statement inside of the introduction. And so I would go back to this paper and I would look at the introduction and see which would I give it as the teacher. Looking for those couple of things. I know that it doesn't really talk about the hypothesis. Do I want it in there? And then I would say, yeah, it probably should have been in there. I'll give it a three instead of a four. And so I can go through all of these. Maybe the sources and formatting need some help. Um, this one might not be the greatest uh, evaluation because this is copied and pasted from a PDF that I downloaded from Canvas from a previous year's submission and then copied and pasted into, <laughs> into a chatbot. And so maybe the sources and formatting one, I'm gonna grade that one manually. And to be honest, that's going to be super easy to do. So, uh, yeah, so we can even, we can cruise through these really quickly. I can, here's a, here's a third one that is formatted even differently, but I do see a lot of sources. So maybe it's good. I'm just going to paste it in there, not even tell it anything. See if it figures out what I want it to do and check this out. It's evaluating it and I didn't even give it instructions on what to do. It just recognized, oh, this is a paper. It probably wants me to grade it. And so again, threes and fours, a couple of twos, things that probably could be improved. I'll go double check those, see if I agree, if I disagree. And so I wanna be very clear. What I'm suggesting is not that you let your students use artificial intelligence to write their papers. I'm not even suggesting that you should let your students use artificial intelligence to be a source for any of your papers. Um, I think that there's great power in doing real research and doing real writing. But I do think that using tools like School AI to help your students become better writers is totally what you should be doing as a teacher. Um, I think that using artificial intelligence to help you grade more accurately and more consistently, I think that's also something that we should be very interested in doing as educators. Um, so anyways, this was the video. I, I'm in the process of grading papers right now for this particular assignment, and I thought that it might be helpful for some of you. So if you're interested in this particular space and you want to remix it, add your own prompt, check the video description for it. If you are interested in learning more about School AI and want to know how to get a different tutorial, leave that in the comments section. Also, I'm interested do you think this is a good use of AI? Should we actually let students do this or do you completely disagree with me? Um, anyways, if you found any of this content helpful, definitely consider subscribing for more like it to come. And uh, with that, I guess we'll see you later. Bye.
can see the end, but we'll see it through.